Uh, good morning. Uh, we all know that uh, war against extremism is uh, not easy, and uh, we have to set that um, um, fight of extremism depends on uh, stopping recruiting. We know that some countries surrounding those war-torn countries uh, surrounding Syria, Iraq, they are recruiting uh, and sending people from all around the world. Uh, therefore, we have to um, start with, first of all, monitoring media, which um, mobilizes these young people who come and fight in Syria and Iraq and elsewhere. We know that 85% of the media coverage now is based on Western sources. And we publish in our media what these Western sources want. So we deliver indirectly the message from these Western media. Whether we know that or we don't know that, these media agencies, they are monitored and supervised by intelligence agencies. For example, Reuters. It is directed by MI6 and MI5. If we talk about AP and Bloomberg, they are directed by CIA and NSA. So they publish, they deliver what they want to deliver to us. And we, uh, uh, you know, um, axiomatically take this for granted that these are Western sources so that we rely on them and publish what they want. So my suggestion is that we don't publish unless we filter out what we want to say because they have that bait in that message. Okay, this is number one. Number two, regarding cyber security, as I said yesterday, um, most of these servers are Western made and they know what these guys are doing, what they are sending and uh, what are their activities. So they notice and they watch. And I have been in one of these places, I was just watching all the messages that these guys are sending. They, on the monitors, they know who are these guys, where they are, what they are doing, and they tell them, next time, don't send these messages by, let's say, words or by characters. Send them by photos, because by photos, nobody else except us can monitor you and know where, the, where you are, okay? So this is one of these things that we have to take care of. Um, also, we have to form a kind of entity or an organization grouping journalists who are not allowed even to publish something against extremism in some countries. Because you know, in some countries in the Middle East, there's a low level of press freedom. So you can't publish anything against, you know, uh, those extremists or anything that is against other countries which will be, you know, labeled as a kind of, you know, um, worsening ties between two countries. So this kind of cooperation with these journalists will be very helpful because they will be a very good source of information for you. Before I conclude, also I want to say that um, in some of these analyses, as my colleague said yesterday, there are more than 1,200 1, extremist groups all around the region fighting, and these are supported and funded by some countries. So unless we drain these funding sources, we cannot control them. So it's our part to shed light on these sources of uh, let's say funding. In addition, we have to take care of those NGOs. I was in the States for 10 years, and I know these NGOs. NGOs, they work on behalf of intelligence agencies, and they want to affect the whole community through funding. Uh, they call them uh, bad money to purchase some powerful media men to start affecting the young and record them the way they want. And this has to be taken care of. 
Um, I had a study with this recommendation I can uh, share with you later. Um, what drives Westerners to join extremism and terrorism groups in the region? If you look here, it has to say social disenfranchisement, which means disunity. They have disunity. They feel they are in the EU, but they don't belong to EU. Okay? Then negative perception of immigration and high militarization in the region. Some people, they like to be militarized in their blood. It's in the DNA. Uh, they have low confidence in the press. They have high perception of criminality. They have high income inequality, which is uh, now because of you know, globalization. And they call it globalization. We know that. In the beginning, it was economic. But then it turned out to be terrorist globalization. This is what they want, open borders so that they can you know, export to us what they want. And this is what they did. Then you have lower government effectiveness and wider access to small arms, lower confidence in the education system, which is very weak. That's why these people, they try to compensate for that by joining other groups so that they can get what they want. Then you have high youth unemployment and higher urbanization, which is a big gap in our societies between the rich and the poor. And now we don't have middle class in most of the Arab countries. We can't see middle class. You can have only those rich people and the uh, low class people, the poor ones. 1% um, of the Arab population controls 99% of the whole economy. And you have lower faith in democracy and lower social cohesion and higher drug crime. And this is the main point, uh, you know, the higher uh, crime, drug crime is because of this, they try to keep these guys working in Syria and Iraq to save their own backs. Thank you.